Hi, my name is Reed Silver, and the name of this show is Fed Pride. The reason it's called Fed Pride is because I'm a federal worker and proud of it. Actually, I'm a federal worker retired and partly rehired on a part-time basis. And uh, I won't be here next week, so you are going to see the same obsolete telecast next week as you have this week. So uh, get ready for that. Uh, uh, the bad news or the good news, as the case may be, is that for me today is Friday, the 10th of October. Uh, for you, you'll be, you'll be probably watching this on uh, Sunday, the 12th or uh, Tuesday, the 14th of October. And uh, if all goes well, because I'm about to go on vacation, uh, we may have a vacation to go to, in which case I won't be here next week, and you'll be seeing the same obsolete telecast even then. Uh, anything can happen. Uh, this has been an incredible week on Wall Street, an incredible week in the, in the uh, country and in the government. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, basically, uh, the stock market has crashed day after day after day. Uh, yesterday, which was the ninth Thursday, it went down about 600 points. Uh, the previous day, about five or 600 points. It's been doing that almost every day this week. Uh, the uh, Dow went from 14,100 a year ago all the way to about 8,400 uh, right now. And Interday today because it had dropped 700 points and then recovered to only losing 150 points. Uh, we ended up with a situation where uh, the market has fallen 40 percent, if you can imagine that. Uh, the S&P was over 1,500, uh, now is in the 800s. Uh, I've been looking for the S&P for the last couple of minutes, but I haven't been able to find it. Uh, before I did this telecast, it's, it's under 840. And that is an incredible low, considering that uh, the dot-com collapse brought the uh, Dow uh, the uh, S&P 500 from 1,500 down to 780. So 780 is the absolute equal, equal uh, uh, collapse point, and it didn't happen today, uh, although I expected it to. Uh, and please forgive the dark spot on my mustache. Uh, that is actually my mustache beginning uh, to uh, turn... Uh, uh, dark again in a spot, uh, not a very convenient spot, but there it is. So uh, the other thing I have to say is that this particular show is live to tape. Because it's live to tape, if I fall off the chair or if I have a uh, uh, computer disaster, uh, you will see it on Sunday or Tuesday or next week, uh, even though it happens live today. Uh, even though I'm on tape, and uh, tape usually uh, could result in somebody pulling their act together, editing a mistake out. Uh, but again, I am the not only uh, the anchor of this desk and uh, the manipulator of the world, uh, but I'm also the engineer here. Uh, uh, this is actually on a blue screen behind me, uh, but through a computer, and I am actually manipulating the computer live. Uh, so that's basically the situation in a nutshell. Uh, what has occurred in the last day or two? Uh, since last week, I can't even cover everything. Uh, the entire nation of Iceland is uh, so completely uh, in debt that each individual, man, woman, child, uh, baby in Iceland owes 116 thousand pounds is equal to two hundred thousand uh, dollars per person so a family of five owes a million dollars uh, when uh, their government came in and bailed out their banks uh, they uh, had put together they had some uh, fancy entrepreneurs that put together some of the leading uh, internet banks in the world tremendous number of uh, uh, depositors of these uh, uh, internet banks in Britain and other places. I guess they must have uh, shown themselves to be a tax haven, and uh, millions and millions of Europeans have lost their shirts. Uh, so uh, uh, that's another thing that's happening. And again, the world is growing and shrinking as we speak.
uh, thanks to my manipulation. So uh, what else is going on? Uh, just today, today being the 10th of October, uh, a Friday, probably things will change in the future. Uh, the price of oil fell $9.50. I was following oil all the way up to $147 a barrel, and now it's uh, gone to $77 a barrel, uh, a drop of almost 50%, and wiping out uh, the last time it was at this price was 10 September 07. So basically it's wiped out all the increases in the last year uh, caused by stock manipulation, uh, mainly, in my opinion, uh, because the very manipulators, Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, they're all out of, practically out of business. So uh, the uh, uh, manipulation of the commodity markets has uh, disappeared, but this can also be another thing. Uh, the depression scenario is a scenario of deflation, not inflation. It's a scenario of deflation. Stagflation that occurred in the 70s, that was uh, uh, a combination of recession with inflation, very, very high interest rates. Uh, we may be having uh, the 1930s uh, problem, in which case... Not only has it wiped out the manipulation of the last year, but we're going to have to watch commodity prices to see if a great deflation is at hand. If it is, that could cause uh, a tremendous problem. And the last time, back in the 30s, uh, basically there were too much uh, uh, production, a very bizarre thing, and you saw farmers throwing milk away putting it into the creeks while people were starving in the cities that needed that milk. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to watch the commodities, uh, just as I've been watching them for the last so many months, uh, to see whether this is just getting rid of the manipulation that occurred over the year of 2007 to 2008 uh, that peaked in July and August, uh, and seeing whether... Uh, the fact that uh, oil's gone from 147 at its top down to 77, uh, basically uh, about 20% uh, higher than its uh, previous equilibrium in 2005 and 2006 of around $60 a barrel. And of uh, course, uh, since that time, uh, the dollar has lost at least 10 or 15% of its value against the euro and uh, gold and other uh, uh, currencies and uh, metals. And uh, consequently, uh, the price you should see, the equilibrium price based on the previous equilibrium, should be about $77. So if it stays around there, that uh, could be a good sign. But if it drops and drops and drops, that could be a bad sign. Uh, not just for our economy, but for the economy of the world, even though it relieve, would relieve the pain at the pump. Uh, the stock market, of course, as I've said, uh, has uh, uh, been driven, driven down 42% uh, from its height. Uh, I think it might be 44% today. Uh, I uh, don't have the exact uh, figure for the... Uh, I have the figure for the Dow, but I don't have the figure for the uh, S&P 500, which I usually use. And uh, again, a 45% fewer actually fully invested in stocks uh, at, you know, pretty much the average of uh, uh, spread that you see in the S&P 500. Uh, you've basically lost over 40% of your portfolio. I personally lost about 5%. And then I have another problem, in which case I had uh, uh, some of these ARSs, which are auction rate securities. Uh, so I have another about 6 or 7% of my portfolio frozen, where I'm getting interest, but I can't take the money out. Uh, but I came out pretty good because I started selling stocks about a month or two ago and haven't bought back. Now, I'm probably going to go on vacation. And uh, for all I know, when you uh, tune in uh, a week and a half from now, uh, the Sunday that I'm uh, uh, 
the Sunday of the Friday that I'm gone, so I haven't done another show, uh, you're going to say, what the heck is he talking about? Because the market recovered. Uh, I don't know that the market will recover uh, next week. It just could keep on falling the way it was uh, these last two weeks. Uh, but uh, it has been precipitous. Uh, there's basically a rush to the door. Uh, one of the explanations for the uh, collapse of this week, where day after day after day, except for today, it's fallen uh, five to 600 points every single day. Uh, the main reason is people are pulling out. It's gotten down to people. It's gotten out of the finance industry. It's gotten out of Goldman Sachs. It's gotten out of uh, Lehman Brothers. And it's gotten down to the average investor. Uh, real investors are dumping their mutual funds. Uh, they're dumping out of stocks in their 401k programs. Uh, they're running for uh, uh, basically safe FDI-insured bank accounts. And I am too. Uh, and as a result... Uh, there was a drop in of $27 billion that was last week in uh, mutual funds. And in order to handle that, uh, the mutual funds have to go into the stock market. They have to sell, sell, sell. And we don't know how much uh, index funds have been sold and all these other things. So uh, the result is in order when your customers are selling, if you are a hedge fund or a stock uh, or a mutual fund, uh, that institution has to then sell and get out of the market that amount. So uh, that is uh, steamrollering on itself. That and uncertainty in the rest of the world. Uh, Japan's stock market dropped uh, 10%, I think it was 9.2% in one day, uh, and it had dropped almost the same amount the previous day. So uh, Japan, which was uh, probably weathering this thing better than anybody else, uh, they are in a complete panic. Uh, England has a pretty good idea, uh, which is uh, their government is uh, spending $85 billion actually buy shares of the banks. And instead of uh, doing the bailout that we're doing and buying the uh, the bad securities and and uh, settling out their uh, their uh, uh, their balance sheets, uh, they are actually buying shares in the banks, recapitalizing those banks, and then uh, actually, for all intents and purposes, nationalizing the banks. Uh, we have nationalized AIG, one of the largest insurance companies in America, probably the largest. And uh, however, we haven't really nationalized the banks yet. Uh, we've taken them over, we, uh, some of these investment banks, we've shut them down like Bear Stearns, and then we've sold it, uh, basically uh, uh, ruined the uh, stockholders, the present stockholders, and then sold the company uh, for almost nothing uh, to some other company. So we've basically been trying to keep it as private as possible, even though the bailout is public money. And the bailout is buying uh, funds, buying these uh, bad derivatives out so that uh, these banks can have a positive uh, uh, balance sheet and can loan money. For every dollar, and I keep on saying this, of loss, on average, because there's different levels and it's a little more complex than that, uh, for every dollar of loss that a bank has, they cannot loan $20, although that does not appear to be what the problem is. Uh, the Federal Reserve has over and over again pumped liquidity, pumped money, pumped loans into this market, and nothing seems to have worked. Uh, the biggest uh, uh, thing that they've done is... Uh, they have basically nationalized the commercial paper market. Now that is, if you are a store, let's say you're uh, uh, Circle K around the corner, uh, you have an inventory, uh, for the most part you put out what we call commercial paper, which is short-term borrowing uh, to cover your inventory. Then when people buy that inventory, pay it off, and then you borrow for the next week's inventory. Uh, that's a normal process. Uh, same thing with companies that have payrolls. Uh, they basically uh, sell uh, uh, short-term commercial paper. Uh, they make, let's say, uh, pipes, and uh, they have to finance the manufacture of the pipes, and then uh, it goes, it gets sold, comes account receivable. Uh, I mean, uh, 
the uh, uh, company uh, or the buyer pays, and they use that money to pay off a revolving line of credit or commercial paper. Uh, that market collapsed a couple of, about a week ago, and there's a lot of companies out there that if they don't get short-term uh, money, if they don't get short-term loans, they will have to close their doors and lay everybody off. Uh, in order to prevent mass layoffs, Federal Reserve, in a kind of a understated moment, uh, came in there and said, we are going to take over and guarantee commercial paper, and we will sell commercial paper directly uh, or buy commercial paper directly from companies uh, so long as they don't try to sell us more than they had outstanding in August uh, uh, because the banks won't support uh, commercial paper. In fact, I was watching uh, uh, CNBC uh, and uh, uh, the Squawk Backs, you know, their, their stock show, and they had a CEO of a medium-sized company, uh, which was, I believe, U.S. Extrusions or something like that, and make pipes. Uh, he said, uh, basically, one week he's borrowing a 2% uh, short-term paper. Next week it's 5.6%, which is unbelievably high. Uh, one week it was 10%, and it's, now it's 5.6% again. Uh, so uh, he doesn't know where the next dollar is going to come to finance his inventory and his payroll. Uh, he makes money. Uh, his customers uh, give him money for delivered product, but he still has to finance the manufacturer of the delivered product. And that's done by short-term paper. So if he has trouble raising short-term paper, uh, the minute... You know, everybody knows, or maybe people don't, but if they've studied any accounting, uh, they know about a profit and loss statement. Uh, they know about revenues and, uh, and expenses. Uh, few people, uh, they also know what an income statement is and that uh, assets equals liabilities minus uh, uh, plus capital. Uh, but what they don't know is that there's a cash flow statement. When that cash flow statement goes to zero, which means I can't get any cash. Uh, actually, a liability could be good for a cash flow statement so long as you have the ability to borrow that money for cash so you can pay uh, what you owe in the short term. Uh, so uh, the fact of the matter is when cash goes to zero, uh, no matter how much the net worth of that company is, they can own uh, the Empire State Building uh, have it fully rented and uh, have a uh, hundred billion dollars in assets. Uh, they are still out of business. They have to lay everybody off or they have to find some cash. And uh, that's what this whole credit crisis is all about. Uh, so everybody is racing, racing against time. Try to be able to get the cash is there. They raise the debt ceiling. There's an extra trillion dollars of cash. Uh, out there, some for the bailout, some uh, being issued by the Federal Reserve. However, if they don't get that cash out to the local Circle K, they are going to close your, their doors. You won't be able to uh, uh, buy snacks and gas and coffee from them. So that is the situation. That's what uh, this whole thing is all about. So we're in a race against time to get cash to the companies. I know they call it Main Street. I think that's a hate that idea. It's mostly Industrial Boulevard or a uh, commercial strip mall uh, to get that cash to those uh, businesses, small, large, and middle middle sized, so that they can finance their inventory, make things and pay payrolls so that we can then go buy stuff and keep this world economy afloat. Otherwise, we have a situation in like uh, the 1920s. In the 20s, basically, America was the breadbasket of the world. Uh, we were also uh, uh, the second largest, uh, about to become the largest manufacturer in the world. Uh, we made and had the capability of making tremendous amount of products. And because the flow of money choked up uh, 
25% of the people became completely unemployed. Another 50% of the people were underemployed. And hundreds of thousands and millions of people were thrown out of their homes and uh, businesses closed that were really solvent, that had assets, that had customers. Of course, they lost the customers, too, through a complete collapse of confidence. What does the word credit mean? Uh, credit is Latin for he believes. He believes that these little pieces of paper over here, let's see if I can find one, are valuable. Uh, the minute the uh, credit disappears, the minute the belief disappears, the minute the confidence disappears, these become worthless and we are on a barter economy and we are just, uh, if you have a house to live in, and it's paid off, you're lucky. If not, they might foreclose it. And uh, otherwise, other than that, put a chicken coop in the backyard and uh, 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 eat eggs for breakfast. So uh, that was what was happening then. I'm not saying that's happening now. Uh, however, you know, I've said uh, that the Great Depression was averted three, four, five, six times, and now hopefully it'll get averted again. Uh, there's going to be a G8 meeting, uh, which is the largest industrial and uh, commercial powers in the world. Uh, all the finance ministers and the presidents, the prime ministers of all the major powers are supposed to get together and discuss the plan. Uh, Russia has had to close down their markets over and over again. Uh, their credit crunch is getting to the point where people are being mass laid off already. Uh, Brazil had to shut its markets down. Uh, this thing is spreading, and uh, hopefully uh, by basically having a worldwide nationalization of the banking system, uh, we may still be able to stop it. Meanwhile, what is this doing to politics? I'm going to look away. Okay, this is, I'm going to disappear myself. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, situation as of... Uh, Day before yesterday, uh, you can see that uh, oh, uh, Obama and, Bi and Biden are just uh, really coming up ahead. Uh, and then when we go to the no toss-up states, let's hope an ad doesn't show up. Cause, uh, and it did. So I'm a little depressed about it. Let's see if I can get the... Uh, let's go down a little bit. Uh, as you can see, uh, Obama is way ahead right now and would win the race, uh, 353 electoral votes to 185 if the race was run today. Let me get rid of the uh, cellulite ad. I, please, I absolutely apologize that an ad showed up. I was unable to have time to try to transfer that image uh, to a PowerPoint chart like I usually do. And when I do, uh, we always have a, uh, a little... Uh, disaster and I'm unable to uh, get it inside so that you can see the whole picture and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is, is that the financial crisis of the last two weeks, the failure of the bailout, which was actually supported by both Obama and McCain, uh, to stabilize the credit market, the increase in unemployment, which actually was not that much, it was 160,000 uh, the week before and actually improved a little uh, this week or wasn't uh, quite as bad, uh, still losing jobs, but not as many. Uh, basically, the American people are sick and tired of uh, hearing about a possible depression coming on and uh, they're going to vote against anybody who was in the party in power at the time. And uh, McCain is the person who uh, is a Republican. Bush is the uh, uh, president, and people are, are voting against it. Now, uh, who knows? Uh, there could be a switch around in the next two weeks, and uh, if somebody's watching this in a week and a half, they could be saying, what is this guy saying? Everything's going great for McCain, terrible for Obama. Uh, however, I kind of doubt it. Uh, but it is always possible. Uh, McCain came, came up with a plan basically to bail out and have the government take over mortgages uh, from individuals uh, and uh, refinance them at the lower amount 
the value, the current value of the house. Something interesting to see. And uh, conservatives are mad at him for that. And the Democrats are playing, uh, you're irresponsible. My name is Reed Silverne, and thank you for watching.